Hey, Tiger fans, Ben Rosenbaum here for another edition of the Tiger Lacrosse Report. As always, I'm joined by the head coach of the Tigers, Sonia LaMonica. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, Coach, uh, you take your Tigers down to Harrisonburg. Always a tough play to play, tough place to play, a uh, tough team, and, and a little bit of a rivalry with the Dukes. And uh, not a great start uh, early in the game and in the first half, but in the second half, uh, you really do mount quite a comeback, but ultimately fall short. Uh, your thoughts on, on the ball game? Yeah, I mean, obvious uh, that we can't get ourselves buried in such a hole and have to claw our way out. Second uh, time we've we've done that. Um, so, yeah, we've really got to address kind of our intensity, how we step out, our readiness. Uh, but we've identified some of the things on the field that, you know, we can correct and, you know, step into our next contest with our best foot forward. And it's interesting because you look back at some of the uh... – or one or two of the losses earlier this season, uh, it would be strong starts, but but slow second halves. Yeah. Uh, and now it's kind of flipping on you. Yeah. Um, any and you kind of mentioned it a little bit, but any idea what's kind of causing causing the the lack of just playing a total game, I guess to put it. Um, I think it's a little combination of things, but yeah, our readiness, I think, both just physically um, and and mentally as well. You know, I think. It's clear that, you know, we, we were just having difficulty executing and, and playing lacrosse on the offensive end of the field. Uh, we are overthinking things and, you know, we got to get back to, you know, playing tough, gritty lacrosse, um, sharing the ball and finishing our opportunities, obviously. So, I, you know, I think it starts with just us maximizing our, our offensive possessions that we get and, and we've been struggling with that um, but we have done it before so we just have to sort of um, yeah we're pinpointing sort of the reasons why and making some adjustments so that yeah we can come out come out firing and um, you know get on on our opposing goalie early not giving them confidence early in the game um, that's going to help us that's going to take some pressure off some other areas um, but, you know, again, it's, a, it, and we've got to stay positive as we go through sort of, you know, this, this tough, tough spot right here. Um, so we've got a great opportunity coming up um, to make some adjustments from our last outing. And, um, you know, obviously also just with our team, some things that we can do better and, and go for it. Uh, while of course, and as we just talked about, it's, it's a team effort at the end of the day, I do want to highlight one individual, uh, Blair Paree. Um, who we know is capable of scoring the ball almost at will, had a very tough game against Drexel, didn't get a lot of looks, doesn't score. Uh, rebounds, um, obviously, a, a, in, a, in a coming up short uh, game, but scores four times against James Madison. And what does that say about her maturity, her growth uh, from last year to this year, that she's able to kind of, you know, take it on the chin one game, but then come back and respond and, and have a great game against a tough opponent? Yeah, I think Blair's always going to come out and compete hard. She's a physical player. She'll she'll grind. She will really grind. Um, but too, I mean, Drexel was face guarding her. That's part of why we didn't see, you know, uh, her in the mix. They knew how big of a threat she was. So they made a decision to put someone on her and try and limit her getting the ball because she's dangerous with the ball. Um, so, you know, that is not a position Blair's seen a ton, at least at the collegiate level. Um, so that was part of working through and she started to open up as the game went on, as you kind of figure out how to play with a face guard. Jane, you, you know, that, that wasn't their defensive approach. So you're always, it's not necessarily the, the player, you know, underperforming versus performing to a high level. Sometimes it's, you know, what the opposing team is doing to limit that individual and then working through that in the course of the game um, to, to, yeah, overcome that and, and to use that against them. So, you know, that's part of what we see from game to game, but Blair's always going to go hard um, and she's going to make the most of her opportunities when she gets them, you know, getting put on the eight meter, driving hard and, and certainly, yeah, she's, she's a competitor. So she's going to reset each game no matter what. Uh, now, so you put the Dukes in the rear view and you move forward uh, two games this week, first on Friday up at Drexel for a rematch with the Dragons, and then on Sunday uh, here at Tiger Field against the Hofstra Pride for the first of two against Hofstra. Uh, starting with the Drexel game quickly, uh, obviously a tough loss to them 
last time uh, you, you took on Drexel here in Towson. Uh, what do you got to change? What do you look back at from that first meeting with them uh, to get ready for this uh, rematch? Um, yeah, I think just we offensively, obviously you're seeing a zone defense and that's what we saw. Um, sorry, I was more referring to the face guards you're seeing in George Mason, but the zone, the zone is going to change up um, how an offense needs to play. So, uh, yeah, you know, they played a zone, they played a man. We saw a bit of both. Um, you know, I think we saw what worked in the game and what didn't work. So it's a matter of sort of taking those pieces um, uh, whether it's on the, you know, defensive end for us, um, you know, we made some adjustments that helped. And then there was some, some issues that we, we found in the game that I think we're ready to, to address for ourselves to limit, you know, they're, they're strong offensive players, particularly um, Carson Harris and um, Grady you know, number 11, number five, but again, they're a great offensive unit. They're not just two, a two man show. Um, so yeah, I think we're ready to make some little adjustments there on defensive end and then offensively, you know, we saw some success obviously in transition, um, but also just offensively, yeah, how we're attacking the zone, um, some things that we are looking harder at so that, yeah, as we said already, we can come out and, um, yeah, generate some, some great scoring looks and, and, you know, we got to compete against um, a great goalie. You know, I think their goalie really had a great game. And um, I think we too aided in boosting that confidence early in the game. So it's about kind of being able to get inside of that eight meter um, and get inside to finish some good shots and, and kind of, you know, crack that seal. And then, um, and then you can really kind of go to work. And then of course, Hofstra uh, pride coming in on Sunday and you can't really talk about Hofstra without talking about Alyssa Perella, and I'm not going to ask you what your defensive plan is for Perella because no spoilers here. I don't want to give anything away, but uh, just uh, Perella, I mean, she's a dynamic scorer. She's a great player. What makes her very special and effective? Oh, you know, she's just an all-around a great, great player. She's got great lacrosse IQ. She's very skilled um, with both hands. She's great speed and quickness. She's so used to seeing anything teams throw at her defensively, whether it's zones, whether it's a face guard, um, you know, so she's really seen it all and that's allowed her to master her craft. She's very experienced. She's a veteran. Um, so she, and she's a great finisher. Um, so yeah, you know, she's obviously sort of the backbone of that offense. Um, but yeah, you know, we'll, we'll have to cross that bridge um, after, after Drexel, but certainly she's a player that, you know, you've got to limit. If you don't limit Alyssa Perella, um, Hofstra's really dangerous because she can put up a lot of points, um, a lot of points. She can really carry um, her team. That's what she does well. She handles that pressure. So um, that really is, is important. And um, that can really take the wind out of the sails for any, any team whose who's top player is, is, you know, not able to find the back of the net, um, you know, that can really be deflating. So, you know, I think it's, it's obvious that, that, you know, that is um, definitely something that we've got to be ready to, to execute and, and limit when we get to that game. All right. The Tigers hit the road to take on Drexel on Friday at four o'clock up in Philadelphia before they return home on Sunday at two o'clock to Tiger Field to take on the Pride. That'll do it for us today on the Tiger Lacrosse Report. Coach, thanks for joining us and good luck this weekend. Thanks, Ben. Looking forward to it.